Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's a sunny day. That's nice, isn't it? I'm just fetching some tools to pick up muck after a certain ginger person. So, as you will have guessed from the title, a certain ginger donutty. Hello. He's going for his first ever jumping lesson. Thank you, matey. So I'm just getting donut ready. He's being very impatient. That's naughty. Do you realise that's naughty? No, of course he doesn't. <laughs> Mum's pulling the lorry around. It's going to be a short and sweet one. Going across the road for our first ever jump lesson. So let's crack on and get in. Goodness me, Donut just knows. He's not even got travel, did he? Travel boots on it. He knows when the lorry's pulled around. I think he heard it. So I'm wandering along with our stud kit. We're steady. We've got a gateway. Ooh. Goodness me. Hey, hey, hey slower. Whoa. Manners. <laughs> so we're literally nipping across the road. That's why my hat's not even come off. Because, um, I've just ridden Maggie and Titan. And then we're quickly getting Donutty done. So, um, Mum's just said she's not bothered about studs having carried the stud keep down. Are you right to hold him while I just kick that bedding down? So, we've got a very excitable donut on board see him on the camera he's been squashing his face up to the window um, and training's great where we're going we're going to Tina Cantons um, it's just literally across the road from us so we just like not even 10 minutes in the lorry yeah that's true mum, mum was just saying that the roads closed going one way so I could have hacked him here and that's Tina just pulling her in in front of us initially very good timing. So we'll dash about, get him ready. This is his first ever jumping lesson. Like he's, he's never had a jumping lesson. I haven't had a jumping lesson on him. So he's literally gone from jump, he's learning his first jump with me. Oh, it looks like a gate might be broken. Learning a first jump with me to doing BE. Jump, jump and I'll shut these gates behind them. I'm just jumping out to shut the gates because they're they're usually electric but they're obviously broken um yeah so he's never had a jumping lesson we've done everything that we've done um sort of ourselves and with mum being eyes on the ground for me how am i meant to do this up do that um so it's going to be really nice to get some feedback and get some exercises on what to do and pop around of course with another set of eyes on us we're going to jump a course on grass which will be good so I'm going to go get him ready now and then we're handing over to Mum who is going to be on cameraman duty. Yeah, for Mum filming. Mum filming. Hi guys, Future Evie here. So I was just editing this video and I wanted to give you a little bit of context of all of the clips so that um, one, you get to see more of what we were doing, but two, if there's any chance of you being able to take something away from this, then... I want to give you every chance to do that. So um, prior to this clip that you're going to see, I warmed Donut up on the flat, had a quick chat with Tina to tell her like his history and where we were up to and I, what I thought he needed to improve on, which was just sort of like more balance and being more established around the course um, so that we're more likely to get the clear rounds ideally. And then once I had warmed up on the flat in walk, trot and canter, Tina told me to have a nosy at the course where the numbers were as we went round. And then she had some telegraph poles next to the bank 
set out at canter distance so we could just canter down them and we established that he has a really huge canter stride which I knew already but also that I hurry him along a little bit too much so she asked me to sit a bit quieter just let him take himself through and he went a lot better that way we then progressed on to the fence that you're going to see us doing but we jumped it as a cross pole both ways and with that she asked me to start sitting up a bit um, more upright and just let his shoulders come up and again just maintain his balance um, and straightness into the fence so that he can do a lot more of the work and I can just sit a bit quieter and this is quite a contrast to my other horses because um, Maggie and Titan they're nowhere near as hot off the leg as Donut is and you have to sit and ride Donut quite quietly whereas those two have to work quite hard to get like going really well and they like their hands holding and you to be quite busy so um straight away Tina was like no you're doing too much sit quieter have your shoulders back so let's go have a look at this clip and then I'll be back to chat to you is good then at least when you're a bit far off they'll come and lift their jump and wave the hurdle yeah. if you're a bit close they'll really yeah run. right let's break it down a little bit for him so let's run up some distances and, and break the course down and then to finish we'll jump around the whole course once he's had a play because it might blow his brain space right now might. did you say his left rein was his better rein right rein's better, right rein's better. Right. so let's come on the right rein yeah. and jump your orange down to your black it's on a forward yeah. distance okay okay so just Sit up quickly, scoop him up from your from your feet and your leg, and just just keep that balance through there, okay? Yeah. And just jump those two. Okay. Okay, so there you can see how much more upright I was sitting than probably in previous videos where you've seen me riding him, and it really did bring up his shoulders. So Tina was saying he is naturally built a little bit downhill. He is croup high. Um, so it makes life difficult for him, probably in all aspects other than going fast, but that's that's because he's a thoroughbred, he's designed to gallop. Um, but it still doesn't seem to hold him back anyway. We just have to work harder to get him to sit more on his bottom and come up in front. So what she was saying towards the end of the clip, um, for my next bit, you know, just scoop him up with my legs, support him with my legs, bring him uphill and then use my body as well. Um, and it's something we discussed further on in the lesson too, which is I'm quite short. I think I look bigger on a horse than um, you might realise. I'm only five foot two and Dona is, we've registered him as 16'2", but he might even be 16'3". So he's like deceivingly taller than he is everybody who meets him in person is like my goodness he's a lot taller than he looks in the videos um so I have to use a lot of my body to compensate for my lack of um 
lymph. <laughs> so with that, Tina's just immediately engaged with get your legs on him, get your shoulders back, get your balance and don't look for a perfect stride. Just let him sort it out because if you've got his shoulders up, if we get in a little bit deep, he's able just to bring his bottom underneath himself and snap up. And if we're a little bit far off, again, instead of ploughing into it and flattening when he has to do the long one, he can come up and around instead. So you can come and watch us down this line she's just described and see what you think. And fair to say, we were all pretty pleased with that. Did you see how his shoulders came up? And he was quite neat and tidy in front, which was super. And then it was quite a long stride. But what Tina said she was really pleased with for me, having, you know, I've been pressing the accelerator a little bit too much. I knew it was long. I knew we were going to be a little bit far off, but I just hugged him and was a bit like, I know we've got the scope in this jump and these length of stride to make this so we'll just keep on traveling and we'll not press the panic button and accelerate too much and with that he made up the ground beautiful on to this next couple of fences we did another related distance back and then a turn back to another fence so we were continuing with the shoulders up just letting him have a little bit of a look at the course as well something i was really liking about my session was Tina was always referring to him as a baby, which is really good because that is where he is in his training. He's effectively like a four-year-old in his training, but for the fact that he's fully grown and fully matured in his body, although I'd say he still needs a lot more muscle. But in terms of his jumping and his mileage, he's been jumping three months. So despite being nine years old, he is a baby in his education. So I thought it was really, really great that Tina was training him like that rather than going, he's nine, he needs to get on with it now. And I think we really reaped the benefits from it. He arrived, but he's mm -hmm. stayed. Good. Good boy. So we did that very sweetly, you know, he's popped over those fences, he's got on with it. Um, I pointed out that I found it quite tricky off that turn and I'd say that is where we have a rail is when we've come off of a turn because we've not got as much balance around it. Um, so that's a little conversation Tina and I had afterwards where she said, you know, you're riding a bit, bit too much like a grown up and it's lovely. Everybody can try and do Grand Prix turns, but realistically, when you're on something that's been jumping for three months, maybe make life a little bit uh, easier for you and start turning earlier. So what I was doing was I was hanging out on the track and then I was like, outside aids, come round the turn with your shoulders up. And we just kind of not getting it quite quick enough because he doesn't quite turn on his bottom as much as he will when he's fully educated. So her advice was ride him a bit more babyish, look and start your turn sooner. Simple as that. Keep supporting him with your outside aids, but just give yourself a bit more time, a bit of space to drift around the turn if necessary. So you're going to see us give that a little bit of a go in a second. The other little bit of um, work she wanted me to do, because we go and jump the exact same fences, was... She wanted me just to give my reins a little bit more as I went over the fence, just because he can jump a little bit tight. So this is what we give a try next. Let's have a look. Good. Well done. Make sure you're staring with your leg and your body set. You. Take your time. Oh, you got the change. Keep going. Good boy. Look and turn early. Balance. Right. What did you think of that? Okay, so it looks a bit different, doesn't it? 
So just that change of just softening and giving the reins a little bit more over the fence just gave Dona a lovely way to go, wahoo, I'm going to be a bit more feisty. So when Tina goes, what do you think of that at the end? We had a bit of a chat about um, the fact that I wasn't completely in control. We'd probably say 80%, 20%. So donut in 20% control me and 80%. Um, and we just had a chat about it being a fine line between giving him the reins and him going for a bit of a hoolie afterwards, which it, it wasn't a hoolie, but obviously I didn't have as much control and not giving the reins and making him jump tight. So Tina said, you know, you've just got to make a decision as to whether you think you're going to be able to get him back in time. So it's being aware that maybe jumping into a related distance, either I need him a bit more back before the fence or maybe I don't let go quite as much over the fence um, so that I can get him back in time for the second fence. Or I was saying it didn't take too much to get him back. So maybe it's a bit of fine tuning of the aids as well when she yelled sit at me it's a pet hate with me I will just release my seat and let the horse do whatever it fancies underneath me I think I, it's because I stand up to engage my legs because they're probably the strongest part of my body and um that's where I'll get into a bit of a if I'm in a pulling battle that's what I'll do is I'll stand up and pull but what she wanted me to do was to sit down and use my whole body, use my core, use my legs, bring my arms back into myself if I'm going to bring him back and scoop him back up. So that scooping that we were talking about at the beginning, um, do that again and then bring him uphill. So don't be stood up pulling and bringing the argument forwards and onto his shoulders, which is going to make him more downhill, come back. So that is something for me to work on. The turn, much better. Although it was a bit more loose and free, so we came to it on a more forward stride. But I'd say it felt a lot better and it was a lot more fluid. So let's go have a look at the next clip where I'm going for this fine balance and trying not to water ski, as Tina calls it, when I'm stood up um, pulling him. Instead, sitting down and using my full body to um, bring him back to me. And then second time, I've got this one. Good, I made him look. Control your body. Good, look after his balance. Yeah, well done. Good jumping over the second one. Use your body, don't just water ski. Good. Yeah, good. He needs a spoon. Okay, so much better, yeah? So this clip had my first poll of the session. Um, and I think it was just a multitude of things, but it's a good learning curve. I would always like to have my polls in my training sessions. So first jump was quite a spooky jump. And then we carried on to the second and we were on the wrong leg or on the left canter lead instead of the right. I had a little go at trying to get a canter trot canter, but it wasn't coming. And I thought, you know what, let's just sort out the balance, work the counter canter and pop over the next fence. Coming off the turn and I'd just say that I hadn't quite got enough uphill energy. There was enough energy, but it wasn't uphill. And you hear Tina just as we sort of about to hit the rail say, look after the balance. And I'd say that's probably what I'd neglected. But then it made him very careful over the second fence. And I was still there just trying to loosen my reins as and when I can. And he really made a lovely shape over that second fence. And it was a nice makeup for it. And then we had quite a long way to go and approach that double. And you can see him getting a bit loose and free. I'm then there going automatically went to a bit of standing up again. Don't water ski, Uvi. Sat back down. He came back to me, which was great. So the aids are working. And then he popped through the double really, really nicely, um, which is quite good because it was quite daunting due to only having about two strides straight before he had to turn at the post and rail. So I was ever so pleased with him for that. And I felt that we'd sort of put quite a few things together and learnt quite a bit from it. And Tina was saying he needs a spookiest fence to get him up in the air and it makes him jump better. So 
any course designers out there building the next show jumping courses we go around can you put like 10 million flowers underneath the fences and then we'll be tight in front okay next thing i do is um the last clip from the lesson i go and jump the whole course it's a really tricky course um i said to tina she was feeling mean when she built it but it was good to test us out so i'll let you watch the course and then we'll do a debrief afterwards i think What did you think to that? I thought it was pretty good. Um, I thought that we were putting together a lot of what we'd learnt in the lesson and I thought that you could definitely see the difference and I, I certainly could feel the difference on what I needed to be doing. So the first fence, I think I'd let the energy die a little bit and we were a bit far off but then it went, it's all right, you've got me uphill enough that I can just take off here. So that's fine. And then we went and popped over number two and then I sort of had these long reins left over from number one. I was gathering them up and I did a check and he went really uphill. So that's when Tina was like, yeah, let go now. And he felt really great. I would say that it just got to the stage in the lesson where I could really get my legs around him. So I think maybe he was getting a little bit tired and he wasn't giving the offences as much airtime. But he was still uphill forwards and like straight and going over the fences. Jumped number three, number four really nicely. And then we came round the turn to number five, that pink one that we obviously had down. And I think that was the stage when I realised I really needed a little bit more leg on because he'd sort of changed from how he had been about 10 minutes ago because he just needed a little bit of help because he'd gone, actually, I'm a little bit tired now. And he just didn't pick up quite as much. But then from there, really did improve as well. Popped over um, number seven. Oh, yeah, number seven. I can't remember. Um, popped over the little red oxer then we did that turn that I was struggling with and I, that felt really good I looked early I got the turn I got straight and then we had a tricky turn back to a water tray fence and we got deep into it but it made him really use his shoulders um, and then came round to number whatever the next oxer and he popped over that. We found it a bit short on the related distance, but it's okay because he was still careful and he listened to me to come back. He didn't come too hollow. Jumped the spooky fence, had that horrible U-turn back to the double, got deep into that, but he's really clever because he can, he can do the fancy footwork. He can get deep and then he could make up the distance on the one stride and then turn and do a very quick dog leg to that final rustic fence. So... Overall, I was really, really super chuffed with him. Like, I don't, I don't think I could have asked more from him, and we couldn't. We learnt so much in that session, so I was ever so pleased. And what we discussed with Tina was probably over winter and a bit in between these next few events. We'll do some gymnastics work. Really teach him to sit on his bottom, get his front end up, 
be a bit tighter in front and just get those muscles forming. So a bit of work on it now, but particularly after the end of October, that's what we're really going to work on. But for his first jumping lesson, fab. I know we've been out doing quite a bit, but I really do think he came along a lot. And I hope that you've taken something away from this or enjoyed it or, you know, I th hope that you found watching this video worthwhile. Um, I know I'll certainly find it worthwhile as a bit of a video diary to look back on in months to come. Our next event is going to be Ask and Brian, which is on Saturday. So look forward to a event vlog next. And thank you so much for watching and subscribe. <laughs> I've not done that before. Like and subscribe, guys. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Bye. He was a good boy.